one on Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com and not too long ago I was in a chat with someone and they had asked that I do some kind of a post on meditation or create some kind of a guide so I really thought about it and today I wanted to present that to all of you and I realized that some people they really have difficulty getting into the right headspace and being able to relax or feel like they know what they're even doing and I wanted to give you some things that I've learned and some tips that I've discovered along the way I realized that meditating is one of the most powerful ways to be in tune with one our gifts um, you know people that are intuitive people that maybe have clairvoyance clear audience all of those kind of things that's one of the best ways to connect with that it also helps you to be in better connection with your higher self and maybe just have a better understanding you're a little more peaceful you're calm you're able to think through things you feel like you have some kind of a guidance I know people get really hung up on oh I have to sit a certain way or I have to uh, you know face a certain direction wear something special or go through these you know specific mantras yeah, when you advance and you progress through and you're ready to do that, absolutely. There are some really um, amazing techniques out there to expand upon meditating. But the real goal, especially for people that are challenged with it, is just to do it. I mean, maybe you do it for two minutes a day or you um, sit there for a little while. Maybe you get one great minute, something floods your mind, you have to clear yourself, all that. Regardless, the biggest thing is to just do it. There really is no right or wrong way. If you are getting in tune with yourself, you're able to have you know, some kind of thought with yourself, some kind of feeling relief. Maybe you're getting some kind of an answer. You're feeling calm. All of that, it's working. So don't get hung up on the small details because I know for me in the beginning, I did get hung up on it and it didn't really serve me well. When I realized you don't, you don't have to do it a certain way for it to be effective. It just it made a huge difference for me. So what I did was I kind of outlined different steps that I take and what I do. And hopefully some of that will resonate with you. And also you can add your own flavor to it to make it more personal. But this is how I approach meditating. So the first thing I do, and I would recommend everybody do this, probably the most important step is to set protection. I mentally state what my boundaries are. I only want high vibrational beings around me. I call upon my guides. I may call upon angels to surround me and keep me safe and protected. Because when you meditate, you are opening yourself up and you're being a little more vulnerable. So I always set protection. Plus, if you're getting information, you want the correct information. You don't want just anything on the other side connecting with you. You want high vibrational information. I might say all negative energy needs to leave this space. Um, this is only a space for high vibrational, truthful, accurate, loving information. So be very clear about setting your protection. I also follow it up by setting my intent. And this only takes a few minutes to do really both of them. Um, you can make it longer if you want, if you have a prayer you want to say. But needless to say, this can be done fairly quickly if you are limited on time. So I set my intent. I'm clear about what I want. I might have something really weighing on me. I might have uh, maybe a health thing I want to know about. Maybe there's something one of my friends is going through and I'm trying to offer assistance. Regardless, we all have different things going on in our life and answers that we want. So I state that out there. That's my goal of the meditation. Maybe I just want to purge negative energy so I feel better. Whatever it is that you want, be clear about it and state what it is that you want. And then this is pretty important too is to get comfortable. I think we've all been in these meditations where you know you're sitting in a folding chair or um, you know you're you're with other people and you get a leg cramp or you know your leg falls asleep like all that and nothing will ruin a meditation more than being uncomfortable you get a backache and you're twisting around or something like that so get comfortable get a comfy chair you can lay down um, you can sit down you can do whatever it is, but be comfortable because you want to relax. You want to enjoy the experience. You don't want aches, pains, twitches, and all those other things. Um, some helpful tips and different variations I do with this. You might go outside. I love going outside and being barefoot. 
because it's very grounded. You're in tune with the earth. I also like to face the sunshine and feel like I'm taking that energy in. So that's something to think about too. If it's a sunny day, you may take advantage of it and or sit in a window where the sun can, can come in on you. That I feel is a very warming, uh, pleasant experience. And then from there, you relax your mind, you clear your mind. And I start with centering all of my chakras and beginning at the root chakra, I visualize a red light. Okay, it's balanced. I move up. Orange, it's balanced. I'm in my solar plexus, yellow. I visualize the light as I move up my body, making sure each one is in check. And when I reach my crown, I open it up with white. And I just, from there, relax and then allow my intent to do its work. One thing that's really important too when you're meditating, just because you put the intent out there, maybe I want to know about a health issue I have. You know, what's going on? What's what's happening? And I'm focused on it. I'm concerned about it and I want to learn a little more. The meditation I have, maybe I see birds flying around and see a sun. You know, I may have an experience that has nothing to do with the health issue I have. Or it could be very relevant. But the most important thing I want you to realize is what you see may not always answer the question that you put out there. But the real trick to it is, is realize a day later I might be doing dishes in my kitchen and then have some clear insight. Oh, it's this. I know what's happening. Oh, okay. I know what I need to do. Or you have maybe a relationship, family issue. I mean, who knows what going on? You'll just have that moment of aha come over you. So don't don't be discouraged if your meditation has nothing to do with what it is you're really wanting to accomplish because it will come in due time. You just, you have to allow your guides to work and the universe to work. And then all of a sudden you'll get the clarity that you're looking for. And then when your meditation's done, maybe you're on a timer and you have limited time, or maybe you just, you know, if, if you've not been timed, you know, when you feel done, you're like, you're coming back, you're, um, not focusing, you realize, okay, I did what I need to do and now I'm coming back. Slowly come back to it. Uh, you know, move your hands, your feet, and then I always visualize closing all those chakras, kind of like turning them off. You don't want to walk around with open chakras because the energy that you would pick up on would be exhausting, plus it leaves you wide open. So I always kind of close everything off, tie everything off, kind of put a little thank you out there for the guidance, insight, support, love. Um, that, that little token of gratitude is a good way to close the meditation. And then you're done. Just enjoy it. Enjoy the effects of how you feel and your connectedness. But this isn't all I wanted to leave you with because there's some people that, even though that's a traditional way that I would do a meditation, I realize there's a lot of challenges to it. Meditation is like exercise. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And I know in the beginning I had to work through, through some things too. So I want to give some advice on some tips so you can get to the more traditional type meditation of things that can help. And maybe you never do the traditional thing because this resonates with you, uh, one of these items, and you just go for it from there. Um, the first thing is a walking meditation. Ideally, you go in nature, but you could do it, you know, just around your home and you go outside and you focus on the sounds, the air, the smells, um, just to allow yourself to be at one with yourself. You're still going to set your protection and create your intent before you try any of these things, but a walking meditation can be very grounding, very soothing, and just really give you some relief. Um, the second thing you can do is just turn the radio off in your car. Uh, a caution with this, I don't want anybody to do anything unsafe, but we all have those paths that we travel all the time, whether it's to and from the store, to and from your kid's school, to and from work. You know, we we have frequent paths that we travel. Turn off the radio and just be in a quiet car. Doing that really allows your mind to flow as well. Shower. Stand in the shower and put the, the water on your back. And some people, when they cannot focus because, you know, you're thinking about your grocery list or your to-do list or what you have, you know, all these other things, Focus on the water hitting your back. If you have to have your mind filled full of thoughts, do it on something like that. Focus on the water running off your back and the heat and what it feels like. Your goal is to turn your mind off and allow your subconscious to flow and that's one way of doing it. 
I also suggest people doing guided meditations. You know, you can go on YouTube and there is tons of free stuff out there. Listen to one, maybe someone's voice you don't like, or maybe someone else plays the music that you don't like. Just try it, sample it. And if you find one you like, great. That could be an option for you as well. And then the last thing that I, I've done a lot, and I, I still do this even today. I mean, we always can get a bonus meditation in, right? Is when you're doing chat tasks or chores around your house, maybe you're doing housework or you're out in your yard or anything like that, I do it in silence and I just soak it in. I soak in what is going on because when you're doing things, especially things that are repetitive and don't require a lot of thought at the time, uh, you know, weeding a garden and that kind of stuff, I mean, you can allow your mind to really relax and allow thoughts to flow. And it can be very soothing and very, um, connected of a feeling that you have with your inner self. So I know this was a little bit longer of a video, but I wanted to share all of this with you in case maybe I could help someone out there. You know, the goal is just to do it. Just go through the motions and try, um, see how you feel and, and just keep trying different things till you find something that works and, and try not to be discouraged. Um, you know, start small one or two minutes a day is all you, you know, if you start with that, that's great. Anything is better than nothing. So in the end, if anybody else has advice they want to share, please leave a comment. Um, you know, like, like me, share me, subscribe, all those great things that helps me out a lot. And for now, I'm Lynn with Psychic Focus at psychicfocus.blogspot.com. Take care. Bye.